Welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the Auto Attraction Entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we're late today, y'all. I know we're late. Yeah. The, the weekend got away from us, even though we had the notes written. Uh-huh. We uh, didn't get a chance to record. So we're making it up. We're recording it Monday evening. So this is going to go live like within an hour or two of when we record it. Yeah. Which is kind of fun. Yeah. It's kind of cool. But anyways... So definitely we're doing that. And this week, we'll be talking about why we don't visit those haunts anymore, basically. Yeah. Reasons that we don't visit particular haunts. We're going to get into it all. But if that sounds like a topic you're not interested in, well, guess what? There's 370 other episodes out there you can check out. You still can fulfill your Haunt Weekly quota. Just go to hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, or YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly. You can also find pretty much everything at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Basically anywhere podcasts exist. Um, so, yeah. This episode, as we're going to get into in a minute, is all about the reasons we don't go to certain haunts. Now, to get back in, we'll get into it deeper, but I want to be clear, we're not calling out any haunts in particular. No. We're going to do our best to avoid giving away haunt names or using haunt names. Yes. So, just keep that in mind. Um, if that disappoints you... I'm sorry, we're not here to spill tea, we're here to help the industry. Mm -hmm. That said, speaking of supporting the industry and connecting with the industry, yeah. Um, last week we made the announce, the half-assed announcement <laughs> that we will be attending Transworld this year. Yes. And basically, now we can confirm that. <laughs> yes. Uh, the hotel has been reserved, we know which days we're going, so... Yeah, the plan is in place. We know when we're going. We know where we're staying. We will be staying a good ways away from the convention center, mm -hmm. but we are a little bit more familiar with St. Louis than a lot of people at this conference will be. Yeah. And so we found a fairly cheap place that's, yeah, it's a mile or two away. I forgot it's two miles away or something. It's like five. It's okay. But it's on the metro line. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about driving downtown if we don't want to. Mm hmm and that is exactly the uh, the plan. Yeah. Um, and yes, we've used the metro in St. Louis before, um, and it's a wonderful uh, system if you happen to live on that line. Yes. The line. <laughs> mm -hmm. And anyone who knows St. Louis public transit knows exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, we've got a um, a place to stay near one of the bus stations, near one of the train stations. So we will be training in. So the basically. Metro. Metro wing, whatever. What's a train to? I know. But basically what we're trying to say is don't plan on coming back to our place to party. <laughs> um, if you want to party, we're going to have to do it at y'all's place, wherever that is, closer to the convention center. Um, that said, like we talked about last week, our main purpose for going there is not for us. Mm -hmm. We're going with Conjured Media. Right. Uh, so please understand we will not be there in the capacity of Hunt Wheelie, but we'll have free time. Yes. We just got to figure out, we don't know when it is. And we can't necessarily make a lot of guarantees right now. And honestly, don't want to make a lot of guarantees because I'm just kind of we're just kind of playing this whole thing by ear. Yeah, we're basically there to help them with the the booth, which is booth one seven one nine. If you're looking for us, yeah, that might be the place to come and grab us. Yeah, we may not be or, at the booth a lot. I mean, once again, this is all we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> or if you're wanting to find out more about Conjured Media, stop by and and we also did an interview howdy. with Alex Berlin. Um, on the founders of Conjure Media yeah. on a previous episode of Haunt Weekly, so you can learn more there too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting company, an interesting idea, and we will be there. You more so than me, because mm -hmm. I'm just kind of tagging along, admittedly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we, we will be at Transworld. Just want to update you that now things are 100% confirmed. Yep. And that's the main thing. We have booked rooms, or a room. Yeah. We have booked a place. Put in the official request for vacation time. Yep, it's as a, it's as official as we can make it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so that brings us to the question of the week, and I've got to be honest, I <laughs> forgot about posting the question of the week last week. I got the reminder to do it and just didn't do it. Um, so we're gonna skip that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do like this week's question of the week, and it's one we're getting into in just a minute. What is your strangest reason to never return to a haunted attraction? 
Maybe you were an actor there and had a bad experience, and even though the haunt might be good and fun, you're just not able to go back. What are your personal reasons for not returning to a haunt? Let us know at hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, and of course, youtube.com slash hauntweekly. Um, <coughs> so, the work we did on our haunt is none. Right. We are planning work for this weekend. This weekend got away from us, and a lot of that was dealing with trans world stuff. Well, some of it was. Some of it was, you know, it was my birthday. Yeah. And I wanted birthday stuff. Yeah, and so early part of the week was birthday stuff. Yeah. Early weekend, sorry, Friday and Saturday, all through Saturday, we were celebrating Crystal's birthday. She turned an age between zero and 150. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Somewhere in that range, I'm just saying. Give me a good round number to work with. No. Um, but... And then Sunday, we were dealing with a lot of the planning for Trans World, trying to pull together our plans to make this trip work, because that's what we do, is a lot of planning on these types of things. Yeah. Even if we're not necessarily planning every single minute we'll be there, we are planning every single minute of getting there and getting home. Right. And luckily, we're good at that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All in all, the main thing is we're confirmed for Trans World. Please do let us know if you want to meet us. Um, I like it's again. I, I don't know where we'll be, when we'll be places. A yeah. lot of this is up in the air, but let us know. And if we can find an opportunity or just find a place we can all happen to be, mm -hmm. that would be super cool. I would love that. Yeah, we may be doing a um, event once I find out the evening schedules for Conjured Media. Yeah, so and that's one of the reasons why so much is up in the air is yeah. we kind of know the daytime schedules a little pretty well. But we don't know the evening ones yet. Yeah. And, yeah. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of playing it by ear. Please bear with us. Like I said, we're not going there in the capacity of Haunt Weekly. If we were going there for Haunt Weekly, we would absolutely have an event planned. We probably would have booked mm -hmm. a bar or something to meet people at. Yeah, or, we're just trying to, like, coordinate between right now, multiple we're just, adults, and that's right, always hard. Yeah, and so many people trying to coordinate with. And we're all getting older, and it's all more complicated now. Because we all want to be, all us old fuckers want to be in bed by like 11 now. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. That's true. All right. But anyways, that brings us around to the actual topic this week, which is why we don't go to haunt, the specific haunts anymore. Now, looking at the nearby area, I figure there's probably around 30 haunts in our quote unquote range. Yeah. Yeah. And our range is probably further than most people. I would agree with that. Um, we get about three hours. Maybe I'd even push that to four in some cases. Yeah, I I would say four and a half to five hours is our our typical. We're willing to go this far on a whim. Yeah. Um. However, out of the haunts we can visit, we hit up at the most around twelve local ones. Now, usually we do one field trip <coughs> per year. Right. And that adds to our totals per year. But locally, in the area, we're doing well if we get about 12. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, we wanted to talk some about the haunts we don't visit regularly. However, as we mentioned, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, um, we're not calling out any specific haunt. Mm -mm. And A, that's because we're not trying to create drama in the industry. But B, it's also because some of these haunts, A, a lot of these haunts, ain't there no more. They've changed ownership. Otherwise... Things have shaken and shift, shifted, but that doesn't mean we're necessarily going there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the rule here is to consider as if we were in the area. One of the reasons will not be you're too far. No. We're playing like if we were within a five-minute drive of your haunt, why would we not go? Right. And this includes, you know, haunts that we've been to on those far afield trips. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretending like if we were back in whatever city in question, yeah, why we would skip that haunt. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of reasons. And honestly, we came up with this idea kind of on a whim. And we weren't sure we could come up with enough reasons. Mm -hmm. But I think we did. <laughs> I really do think we did. So, yeah, basically, if you're looking for why repeat customers may not be your thing, <laughs> maybe something on this list is the reason. Mm -hmm. Because this is the reason we have... I guess you could say quietly quit going to some haunts. <laughs> yeah. Um, item one. All right. You're unsafe. Oh, yeah. The haunt itself is unsafe. We put safety first. Go back to our first episodes. Literally. It was in every, every episode we talked about safety. Um, 
And we have been to a lot of unsafe haunts. Yeah. And this is unsafe either for us or for the actors or for both. Yeah. You know. Usually both, honestly. Yeah. Because usually it's hard to be unsafe for one without being unsafe for both. Yeah, but I mean, if I see that, you know, that or hear that actors have trouble getting out of the situations you put them into, or if you put me in a situation, I'm going to have trouble getting out of. Yeah. If, you know, in a case of an emergency, then I'm probably not coming back. Yeah, and not know? yeah, Dev, not in least 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 but fucking blah. <laughs> At least not until we have confirmed the problem is fixed. Yeah. Like extremely fixed. And we have seen some crazy unsafe shit in our haunt visits, and it seems like in general the more rural the haunt, the bigger the risk is. Yes. I mean, we've had haunts that used real weapons. Mm-hmm. And very plainly did, including getting nicks on us. Yeah. Um we've seen haunts with unsafe bridges or passovers, bad step downs, blind areas where you really should have a light. Yeah. Like on a step down. Screws sticking out. Screws sticking out. Um unclear which exit is the actual fire exit. Mm-hmm. That's happened a few times. Just so many things that make us realize this haunt is not safety focused. And a good example is like it might seem innocent to have the gag where you have multiple exits uh-huh. and you have like six exit signs in a room and only one of them's actually leading further into the haunt. Right. That might seem like harmless fun, but the fact that you are not complying with the basics of fire code mm-hmm. um, worries me about the entirety of the safety package. Yeah. That, that's like the most fundamental thing. Like Ellie's yarn store uh-huh. has a lighted exit sign. Yes. <coughs> Two what? of them, actually. Yeah. Two of them and a fire extinguisher yeah. midway. A, a yarn store mm-hmm. has better fire safety mm-hmm. than a haunted house. A yarn store probably will never have more than like 20 people in it at one time. Yeah. It's just crazy. So, yeah, I if your haunt is unsafe, if we see unsafe things happening, if we take any kind of injury, no matter how mild, we're mm-hmm. probably not coming back. Now, there are exceptions to that. There have been times taking bumps or bruises in a haunt that was safe. It's just shit sometimes happens. I have collided with actors in a dark setting and yeah. otherwise very safe haunt, for example. That's not necessarily a problem. But if I take any kind of injury because of your lack of safety precautions, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, something preventable. Something that was easily preventable. Yeah, not, uh, like not one, accidental. Yeah, one haunt, for example, a trail haunt we went on, had thorn bushes mm-hmm. literally reaching way into the trail. Yeah. In the dark, where you could barely see. And I got, I got my arm scratched up pretty good on one of those. Mm-hmm. And yeah, never again. Not going back. Um, if you're, keep your trail clear, y'all. That's not that difficult of mm-hmm. an idea. So yeah, unsafe haunts will never get a repeat visit from us. Yeah. And that is, once again, unless we hear and confirm from people we trust that the issues are fixed. Yeah. Item number two. Mm-hmm. Kind of going the opposite way here, aren't mm-hmm. we? You're boring. <laughs> hey, honestly, truth be told, this is the most common reason. It really is. Sometimes haunts are just flat dull. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> there's no passion in them. There's not a creativity It's just, yeah, it's not interesting. Yeah, and and it's not interesting and it's not exciting. And like some haunts we've been to, the inside of the haunt was just boring and uninteresting and bland and frankly just uninspiring. But the stuff outside it was pretty cool. Yeah. And it could be the front of house actors. We've seen that in a few places. But Uh the front of house actors were just great. Yeah. Everything inside the haunt. I feel bad for those actors. They're busting their ass, but that haunt isn't giving them a shot. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's a situation of just everything's boring. Maybe yeah. the person ran out of money, time, whatever, to build the haunt they wanted. Or the person had too much money and just went and bought a bunch of props. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, and skimped on actors. Well, yeah, we've been in haunts, some big haunts, actually, mm-hmm. that were just way too bright. And they felt more like a showroom for animatronics. Mm-hmm. We've been in some that were too dark, and we couldn't see shit. And honestly, I, one thing I've learned is we've done a couple of blackout haunts. Mm-hmm. Like we've done, uh, and like I'm, this is 
Not Rise is definitely not a hunt we're not going to, but it's a good example of the problem. We went to Rise on a blackout night. It was way more dull than going on the regular night. Yeah. It just was. I always, so we, we just said, oh yeah, we'll return to Rise. Rise is great, but we're going on a regular night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, if your haunt is always a blackout haunt, it's probably going to be piss-ass boring because you are very limited in what you can do. Yeah, I don't find them to be scarier or more off-putting in any way. The only thing I find scary is I'm worried I'm going to break my nose walking into these brick walls everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have seen haunts that have really just struggled in being interesting. And it, it's not a matter of how expensive a haunt is to build. No. We've seen super cheap haunts like Waterloo. Mm -hmm. Once again, we'll name the good ones. Yeah. Waterloo is an excellent example. Low budget haunt with a long trail and a lot, um, a lot of very passionate actors. They pull off at one of the most unique and engaging experiences I've seen. Yeah. And, you know, that's it. It's, it's that you've got to have passion somewhere in your haunt. Yeah. If it's from your actors or from your build or from your story, there's got to be something somewhere for us to latch on to. Yeah. And, and to you, see that you're interested in it. And you talk about, like, people who just went out and bought a bunch of props. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one haunt we went to. It tried to open up an, an area where the big haunt had left. Yeah. The big haunt had closed. They tried to open up. And they went and they bought, you know, some trailers hooked together and a shit ton of props. Mm-hmm. And it sucked. Yeah. It, they had like two and a half people in there, maybe. Yeah. And it just sucked. It was boring. It was too dark. And I'm sitting there going, oh, yeah, this is like the Fright Catalog showroom. <laughs> just dimmer. It, it's so frustrating. So, yeah, boring haunts, we're not going to go back to. We want interesting and engaging haunts. Once again, if you improve and hone, and we hear that you have, then we'll consider coming back. Mm -hmm. But yeah, once again, it's going to have to be someone I know and trust telling me that. Yeah. And unless you are completely unsafe, there is like a five-year period that we start talking about, well, maybe we'll give them another shot. If we've heard like good things come out. Or and... things have changed, like new management or yeah. a new designer or something. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's true with this. And I think all these, that's kind of true to some degrees, except maybe the next one. Yeah. Yeah. But well but yeah, let's get into that next one. This one's Yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah. You were a fucking asshole online. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one admittedly is one haunt we're thinking of. Well, well, it's one specific, but we've seen it elsewhere. Yeah, that's true. For us personally avoiding a haunt, it was one, but we have seen it elsewhere. Yeah, so yes. we're correct. Um so yeah, basically, you know, if someone leaves you a bad review or says something negative about you, don't attack the person God, yeah. online. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's that's what we saw. And and now, you know. And, and to be clear, the haunt that I'm thinking of that was that we were impacted by, uh -huh. this was a haunt we were fairly close to. Yeah. We knew a lot of the people who worked it and ran it and set it up. We knew yeah. this was a tradition for us to go here. And then... One year, they got a bad review online, apparent. I mean, I, I admittedly, the story online is confusing. Because it, but a, believable because of we, how you know, they work. Yeah, how they work. It was believable. So I'm not 100% sure what allegedly happened, but the things I could figure out made sense. Yeah. Because the, the review was not written well. And the response wasn't, hey, what can we do to make you change your mind? We we want everyone to have a good time. How can we help you feel safe? Come talk with us. Yeah. It was basically to call her names and... And get everyone in the crew the and in the town her. to just like, yeah, to just trash this poor person who had left a review about how they got injured in the haunt. And I absolutely believe that the person could have gotten injured. I mean, there's no doubt. Like yeah. you said, the way they operated. And I... But then again, with us, they always went a little harder, I figured. Yeah. Because we're us. Yeah. Well, and it, it never led to injury or injurious behavior that we saw. Yeah. The it was worst, never putting people in actual danger. The worst I ever had there was the spa, the poppers. Oh, no. There was one other time. I was thinking of that one, too, in the, in the blackout okay. maze. Yeah. I, I uh, cut my forehead open when I walked into a wall. 
Oh, I thought you headbutted somebody. I think it was I actually. You know. I think it was both. Okay. I think I made. I think head to head contact, and then as I fell over because of the way it was built, I hit the wall too. Okay. I had like my head had probably the worst day. It's second worst day it's ever had, and the third worst day it's ever had <laughs> in a haunted house that I can think of. Should we get you like a helmet to wear to haunted houses? Well, now? one of them was when to we were building ones? that one. So. Oh okay, yeah. <laughs> And and okay, no, but no, well, only only one time I think I got knocked actually unconscious on. Yeah. And that's a completely separate matter. And that haunt was also that haunt where I got knocked unconscious, but unsafe for other reasons too. Yeah. They had a lot of issues there, but yeah, but we have seen this where, and sometimes it's not the owners or anyone like official with the haunt that's the problem. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's the scare actors, and this is something I've noticed on a lot of haunts, like your. Regular frontline actors, Mm -hmm. they're just there to have fun. They're not, you know, going to go over the top about anything. They're just there to have fun, and they're they're grateful to be there, basically. Yeah. And the owners are surprisingly chill and cool, Mm -hmm. um, and cool to be around and great. It's the lieutenants, it's the middle managers. They get everything in a twist. Yeah. When something like this happens, I've seen that a lot. So yeah, basically. Have a social media guide for anyone that may be posting in any kind of semi-official capacity, even, mm-hmm. of where you're wanting to say, this is how we handle these things, not, you know, by name-calling and harassment. Yeah, yeah, don't get everybody to go jump on the post and, like, blast people. And, and yeah, they, they, I mean, it started out with a tame disagreement over it. And it just escalated in name calling, verbal threats, and everything else. It just got so ugly. Yeah. And it and, was, and the person who originally left the review yeah. never commented no. again. And that was the crazy thing. Like that person did absolutely nothing to instigate further reactions. No. They left one negative review and then it was like fifty comments. <clears throat> and it started off fairly tame, like I said, and it just kept getting worse <laughs> as it went down. I mean, yeah. God. So, yeah, control your social media. Don't be a dick online. If you're going to be a dick online, we're probably skipping. And we've actually, in fact, in one case I remember, people were a dick online. We didn't go the first time. Yeah. It wasn't even we didn't go again. There was another haul that we saw were being dicks online. It was like, well, moving on to a different part of the city. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, just saying. All right, number four. Racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic stuff. Yeah. Look, I, I'm not going to get into a conversation about quote-unquote cancel culture here. I get to choose how I spend my money. I choose not to spend it at haunts that do these things. Yes. It's that simple. Yes, there is a haunt that was in the news many years in a row for certain nights that they had. And if we're ever in that area, we will not go to them. Yeah. Period. Yeah, that that is a hard and fast rule for us. And... One thing I'll say is we did have one haunt we went to do some transphobic stuff. But uh-huh. when we and a couple other people approached them about it and said, hey, yeah, this isn't right, they changed. Yeah, they changed the ending. It, immediately, they changed the ending of their whole fucking haunt. And I was very impressed by that. Yeah. This was not a large haunt. This was a small troop. Yeah. And they were they were rural and, and not, well, in New Orleans or, a, no. a, a, you yeah. know, our, yeah. our sensibilities here are a little bit different. Yeah, but we pointed out, and we had, and honestly, a very polite, well-mannered conversation with them. Yeah. And apparently someone else contacted them, too. Same thing happened. Yeah. And between those things, they changed the ending. And it's like, that is so cool. Yeah. You know, that is what I want to see. So, yeah, if that haunt ever does open again, I will gladly go. Yeah. Because they fixed the issue, and I know with a high degree of certainty they fixed it. And plus, they're probably going to do a completely different show anyway if they do reopen. Yeah, yeah, they they were only open one year that we know of. Yeah, that we know of. We might have, they might have been back, but we would we only found out about that one year through sheer coincidence. Mm-hmm. So you know who knows, but yeah, if you have this type of material in your haunt or in your marketing, God help us. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, you know, actually, please do include it if you are. Yeah, going if, to if do you're going to be a homophobic or a racist or something, yeah, do please put it in your marketing. Let everyone know up front. Yeah, so we, so let people, me know not to go to you. So people who do want to spend their money with you can, and the people who don't don't have don't feel like they were tricked. No. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, but yeah, basically, you know, this is a situation where if you admit your mistakes and do the right thing, 
once again, I'm willing to forgive and forget this pretty quickly as long as there's genuine contrition and a genuine attempt to change. Yeah. Because, and, and this is a point Ellie made many times is that if we don't allow people to change, mm-hmm. if we don't reward them when they change, they have no motivation to change. Mm-hmm. And so I completely believe in letting people change and then supporting that. Exactly. I think it's that simple. I mean, so number five. Okay. Too long of a wait. Q line time matters. We have to try to guess this every time we do a haunt visit. Um, how much time we're going to spend in the queue line. Yeah, this is one of the reasons when we do our haunt field trips, mm. we spend the extra money to buy VIP when and wherever we can. Yeah, and why it was so hard on us this last time to do that, because we were in an area we had no idea. No. And some of the haunts um, mm-hmm. didn't offer VIP. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, if we're standing in your line and waiting for 90 minutes or more, that's a full night. Like, yeah, we can happily do that once. <laughs> and if you blow us completely away inside, there's a chance we might come back. But we'll probably be eyeing the VIP the second go around. Exactly. <laughs> Because we don't want to spend all evening in a queue, especially if it's a boring queue. Yeah, and that has been one thing that I pulled from the 2022 haunt season, was that there were a lot of boring queues. Yeah. Just abjectly boring queues. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it, it, and it made me so frustrated, because... Um, like I said, on a lot of our trips, we do VIP. If VIP is an option, we're going to do it just because we can't afford those weights when we're trying to hit four haunts in a night, mm-hmm. three or four haunts in a night. We just can't do it. There's, you only, you only, you can't, you only stuff so much. You only stuff ten pounds of shit in a ten pound bag. <laughs> you know, so we, we can't really do anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I remember one haunt in particular, we got VIP, so we just walked right past all this shit. Yeah. But there was this huge line, people just standing between, not even like real cattle gates. It was a little uh, ropey kind, the little yeah. uh, nylon stretchy things. A bunch of those with nothing going on. Nope. And no access to food, drink. No. Yeah. I mean, nothing. Yeah. Not a goddamn thing. And it was so frustrating. And I can only imagine, like, yeah, we got in, like, within five, ten minutes. Mm-hmm. But I felt bad for the people in the back of that that probably had that 90-minute wait. Because there was fuck all going on. I didn't see queue line actors. Mm-mm, no. and, it, and if I did, I didn't see enough. And I didn't see them working the back of the line. Um, it was so frustrating. Just because, it, it we, yeah. I, I know if we had had to wait in that, that would have been our whole evening shot. Yeah. Um, but yeah. If you know, yeah, because we've done that once or twice. Yeah. And regretted it every time. And and two haunts that we made repeated trips to, um, mentioning here, so this, like I said, not spill tea, but back when House of Shock was House of Shock, mm-hmm. they had an issue where the queue line took so long that even though the House of Shock is only about four miles from our house, mm-hmm. or the, the New Orleans Nightmare now, yeah. only about four miles from our house, we had a faster trip from driveway to driveway, leaving our driveway going an hour up to Rise, Mm -hmm. hitting both of their attractions, and coming back home. So a guaranteed three-hour minimum there, pretty much. Yeah. It was still faster driveway to driveway than a visit to House of Shock most nights. Yeah. Back whenever they were doing the full stage show and everything. Before they were sold. Yeah, before before New Orleans Nightmare. They became New Orleans Nightmare. It was frustrating because I love House of Shock. I mean, it was a great haunted house. I mean, his New Orleans Nightmare is still good. It's still a great haunted house. But it was so frustrating because we knew that even though that is the haunt next door, yeah, we have to plan an entire night to do it. Yep, exactly. So, but we made the sacrifice repeatedly to, to go there because that's what the smart thing to do was. It was a haunt we did enjoy going to and we love the people there. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, and um, on, a, on a note here. You can't, the two approaches to this is find a way to reduce your queue time or at least make the queue line interesting. Yeah. Or get rid of your queue line and, and call over an intercom. Yeah. And do a, <laughs> do a different queuing system. We've talked about this a lot on this podcast because 
I hate, I've always hated queue lines mm -hmm. and I'm hating them worse and worse as I get older. I feel like my patience for queue lines is going down linearly every year I grow older. Yeah, no kidding. I, I, I don't know why. Everyone's like, oh, you'll become more patient as you get older. Fuck that! <laughs> I don't know anyone who that's true for. No, I don't know why. No, I mean, it's like you get to a certain age and that gives you the freedom to just say and do whatever you want because you're old and nobody wants to beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... But yeah, as I get older and older and older, every year I tack on, it's like my patience for queue lines in particular, patience in general goes down, patience for queue lines is, is sinking right into the earth. That and traffic. Oh, God. <laughs> and, it's, and it's very similar oh, yeah, for the same lines. reasons. They're both queue Just lines. Just one, you're in a car. At least in the queue line in the car, I can listen to the radio, I can do other things, mm. than just goof off on my phone. Yeah. I, it's... God, but a lot of these, and like I said, that was the theme I noticed from 2022 was of the haunts we went to, I don't recall one haunt that I thought had a good queue line. No. Some are better than others, but none were good. <laughs> yeah. And that's frustrating. So yeah, um, queue line time matters if you make us wait too long and your haunt just, because you, you got that big hole you dug with the queue line time. Mm -hmm. If your haunt ain't good enough to fill the hole back up, we ain't coming back, probably. Yeah. At least not until you fix your shit. Mm -hmm. Number six. That brings us to number six. Um, mm -hmm. Too pricey for the show. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We've seen this a lot of times, actually. Mm -hmm. Where a price, where we pay the ticket price and we go through and it's way too much for either the quality or the length of the show. Yeah, exactly. I mean, here's the thing I want everyone to think about here. We typically, when Halloween season comes around, mm -hmm. we set a budget of but around two thousand dollars for the our haunt. Yeah. For everything. For everything, yeah. Yeah. That's covering food, transportation yeah. costs, material, building materials, everything. Any expense we have out go. Mm -hmm. We saved a lot this year because we didn't last year because we didn't have to build anything, mm -hmm. so we don't always use that. But that's kind of what our limit is. We have about the same budget for going to haunts. Yeah, that's why I was confused. I'm like, no, we saved two thousand for that, but yeah, it's it's about four thousand a year. Yeah, this is a four thousand dollar a year addiction, <laughs> easy. And I notice a lot of people that isn't much, but this is an avocation completely. There's no money being made here. No, and and I know some especially people, from the podcast. And some people were just like, oh my gosh, you spend that much, um. Yes, yes, we do. So yeah. some people think it's too little, and some people think it's too yeah, much. Yeah, no one's going to think that's the right amount. No. <laughs> Everyone's going to think we're nuts, but it's one way or the other. And the thing is, like, with the with our the income we have, and the, we, we lead a very good life, we're well-fed, we're very happy with how much money we make. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, spending much more than that isn't practical. We'd no. buy another car before that. You know? Yeah. You're getting into used car territory very quickly there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so, basically, if we know a show is expensive and not particularly good, we're not going to squeeze it into the budget. Yeah. Because also got to know, once again, that's for everything. It's for the tickets. It's for the VIP passes. It's for gas slash airfare to get to the haunts. Yeah. It's for the hotel we pay. Exactly. When we go afield. It is everything. And if we visit, you know, three or four and feel that way that are in the same area we're going to discount the rest of that area i'm sorry yeah but we won't be back anyone who's listened to our haunt of uh, field trip reviews knows which neighborhood we're talking about i yeah. won't repeat it here <laughs> no. but it doesn't take an oodle of research to figure out which city west of us we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> no no it does not um you know and, and maybe we're just spoiled here because yeah it's about a dollar <coughs> per minute for most of the haunts yeah. in the area. Uh, Mortuary is an exception, but Mortuary also always has a brand new show. Mm -hmm. um, I, I give Mortuary a little slack on that rule because they're a complete knockdown haunt. Mm -hmm. Or mostly knockdown haunt, I should yeah. say. Or largely knockdown haunt. I don't know what the exact percentage is, but they have more new each year than most haunts do. Mm -hmm. um, so well, I give... and that actually brings us to the next point of mm -hmm. that you don't change. Yeah. Yeah, number seven. You don't change. Yeah. Yeah. I, I go ahead. This is yours. You, yeah. You're the odd because ball. I mean, if we can, well, if we keep going um, to the the same haunt every year, and nothing's changed. Yeah. Like there's no visible <coughs> changes. There are no improvements. There's 
we know it. And then you're falling back into the boring category. And this seems to be a real problem with haunts that have volunteer builders. Mm -hmm. Because every room is somebody's baby. Yeah. And when you say, okay, we're going to tear out the swamp room. I don't know why I just kind of jumped on that, but a swamp mm -hmm. room to move some new one. The person who designed and built the swamp room, but that's my room. It's precious to me. If you tear that out, I quit. Yeah. And you have no leverage because they're volunteers. Yeah. Well, and so, so I want to give a little piece of advice or insight to an artist um, that I picked up a long time ago. And that is, is that if you give something away, if you create something and you give it away or you destroy it, then you have to create something new to replace it. And that helps you grow as an artist. You know, yeah. that's why I am perfectly happy to like just tear down everything and start over in the haunt. Yeah, I, I think... Anyone who builds a haunt, whether to do it professionally or as a volunteer mm -hmm. or whatever, the first thing you need to accept from the outset is that this is not how you build your legacy. These are temporary things. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's... but You want something permanent, paint a painting. Yeah, but no, I've always been, like, super interested in, like, the giant <coughs> sculpture that people make and then set on fire. And I'm not talking about... Burning Man specifically, but there but is there an example. Like, it is an example, and there are other cultures around the world that do similar. Well, they build these giant things that are beautiful works of art, and they're intricate, and then they set them on fire and just let them go so that they can build something new the next year. You know, and uh, similarly, uh, street artists slash graffiti artists, mm -hmm. they will, especially in an area where it's permitted and encouraged, they'll do this portrait to do something that's very impressive, knowing full and goddamn well next week someone's going to come along behind them and cover it up with theirs. Yeah. And it's just going to be layer upon layer upon layer yeah. of stuff, and that no one layer is going to last. Yeah, either that or somebody will come in and they'll remove it. Yeah, if it's illegally done. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, that art is temporary, and yeah. it's always done with the idea that it will be temporary. Mm hmm and I think we as haunters need to delve into that because that's what prohibits change. It's not, I mean, yeah, money and time are factors. God, believe me. Yeah. I understand that. But a lot of the time, the reason that I found haunts are slow to change is just because they are, people are too attached to what should be a very disposable work. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that if we encourage it from the beginning to be like that, to say, okay, you can help build this. We can let you design it. But you've got to come up with something better next year. You yeah. know, this is a start, but have something better next year. Yeah, come back with a better design. Come back with something new. You know, learn how the the room works and tweak it. Yeah, exactly. Enough. Yeah, and that's the thing. We There have been haunts that we've gone through year over year where so little changed that we couldn't even pick out what was new. Yeah. And that's just frustrating. It because, is. Because then it becomes a logical question. Why am I coming every year? Why mm -hmm. don't I wait a few years and then come back? Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't go to haunts growing up, but I went to Christmas light displays. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Well, you went to the big one. I went to a couple of big ones, um, and every year it was let's find what's new, because yeah, they keep some of the old stuff. Hmm. Some of it's very old and outdated. Yeah, but... some of it. <laughs> but some of, some of it goes back to one of the earlier points. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, we would go and we would look for what was new. Every year, and this is in several different places that I live, they would do this. So, um, you know, you've yeah. got to have something to bring people back. Yeah, if it's not new enough, if there's nothing exciting, if it's the... Because we've talked about this before, how the haunted attraction industry depends upon FOMO, the fear of missing out. Yeah. If I can see the same show year after year after year after year, uh -huh. there's no FOMO. Nope. Why would I, where's my FOMO? Why would I fear of, why would I have fear of missing out this year if A, I saw it last year and it was the same, and B, I can go back next year and see it again? Yeah. That's a problem. So, yeah, you got to change. Change a little, a change would do you good. Mm hmm. All right. And our final one right now, I think this is where we can wrap up pretty neatly and succinctly the use of copyrighted slash trademark characters and marketing and inside the haunt. And on and on and on and on. Look, if, if you're not Universal Halloween Horror Nights, uh -huh. you don't get to use 
you know, those copyrighted and those copyright protected characters. And there's two reasons for it. One is it's unlawful and I'd argue unethical. Mm-hmm. But more to the point, it's boring. It goes it's, back to it's number two. Lazy. Oh. It's it's lazy. Like there's so much that you can do with character builds. You know? And I do not understand why so many haunters mm-hmm. are so creative. Mm-hmm. And we'll do a million things, like do all this, put all this creativity in their haunt. And when it comes time to do their story and their characters, oh yeah, we're just going to stick Pennywise in the room. Yeah, it's like but why does it the... stop there? Well, it's like and... spiking the ball in the one yard line. Well, and it makes even less sense when you've got Pennywise in a room that isn't from anything Pennywise. No, <laughs> you know, it's like. This elaborate set that's gorgeous and beautiful, and then you've got a copyrighted character that doesn't belong there. I mean, it's me personally, <laughs> copyrighted characters take me out of the moment every freaking time. Oh, yeah, me too. It's just completely out of it, because now I know I'm safe. Yeah. I know Pennywise isn't real. I know Freddy and Jason aren't real. <laughs> I'm, I've seen them in movies. I know what their thing is. Where meanwhile, if an unknown character comes to me, it's whoa, <laughs> mm-hmm. what what's that person's deal? What are they gonna do? Right? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Uh, it's, but yeah, it's just so frustrating because, and like you said, so often it doesn't make sense in the context or the story they're put in. And the only context I've ever found where it made sense to include a fuck ton of these characters was two haunts we've been to. Where they did a movie theater theme. Yeah. And the whole idea was the haunted movie theater, the horror characters came to life. Yeah. Okay. That's a shit story. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it is. It's a shit story. And the reason it's a shit story is because you're working backwards. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to tell a compelling story. You're trying to have an excuse for Pennywise, Freddy, Jason, Ellen be there. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Whatever. But at least that makes narrative sense. I give you that. Yeah, I just I I'm not fond of that story because a I can name two haunts off the top of my head that did it, and I'm pretty sure I've been to more. Yeah, I know we've been to more. Um, but and but B is yeah, it's working backwards. You're trying to get these characters in your haunt, and you're trying to have it make sense. So here's the story you create so that you can have you know Freddie and Jason making out in the third room of the haunt or whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. No. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, inclusion of copyrighted characters where they don't belong, it not just the legality of it, it really does suck the air out of the room for me. Yeah. Because I can't count the number of times. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been going through a scene and like maybe there's a little quiet. Mm-hmm. Maybe some tension's building. You hear like the drip of water and like the tension's mounting. And go, oh, something good's coming now. Mm-hmm. You, you start to feel it. You get the sh- and then here comes Pennywise. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. You're only harping on Pennywise because you know we're going to trans world. <laughs> <coughs> well, that and uh, the other reason oh. is because we've seen Pennywise or or Slend- Slendy Wise or whatever the fuck you want to call him. Mm-hmm. We've seen like knock up wish versions of him in marketing for major haunts. Yeah, I know. And that's one of the reasons I feel I I, I hit that so profoundly. I just remembered uh, a bonus 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 one. point. Um. If you're a cash only and don't advertise it. Oh, fuck me sideways. That's a good one. <laughs> I don't know how that wasn't in the first eight or so. Yeah. This is now nine. Nine yeah. episodes. I had it originally at eight. Well, no, we had originally had it less than that. But anyways, no, but that's a really good one because, yeah, yeah. we live in a cashless society. Mm-hmm. If I drive out to your haunt and you have no way to take my card, um, yeah, <laughs> issues i mean we always take a little bit of money but like i can't buy your merch i can't (laughs) do anything else yeah and that's one of the things is why are you putting an artificial limit on what i can spend at your haunt yeah that's what you're doing yeah and and there's always suspicion that it's for tax evasion (laughs) reasons that's usually the only two reasons a, a business is cash only in the year of our lord 2023 is tax evasion and because the business's margins are so terrible that the 2.9% plus 50 cents or plus a quarter or whatever it is your transaction fee is destroys that margin. Mm-hmm. One of those two things is the re- reason. 
that, and if you have any other reasons that you don't take, you know, credit card, it's not a valid reason. <laughs> and those two aren't valid reasons. <laughs> no. The only slide I would give is if somebody is way rural. Yeah, and can't and like, process it, yeah. Yeah, can't get, like, phone signal or anything. <laughs> yeah, that is getting to be a difficult excuse, though, with it 5G, is. cellular, and all that. Like, that excuse worked better, like, five years ago. Yeah. Like, I remember when we went to, um, once again, not a haunt that we're trashing, we're actually just talking about it, Winkler's Bottom, mm -hmm. and we lost all cell signal. Yeah, and that's a ain't there no more. That's also. an ain't there no, anyways, but, no, that's not a haunt we have a beef with or anything. No, no, no. We don't have a problem with them at all. They were fine. I mean, they had one minor safety issue, but they seem to have fixed it. But they're not there anymore anyway, so I guess it's double fixed now. Um, yeah. But, yeah, with that one, uh, we lost all cell signal. Mm -hmm. Everything. Just poof, gone. And we, we, we're on, like, good cell plans. Yeah. We don't completely lose signal outdoors often. Mm -mm. We lose it semi-regularly indoors in New Orleans because every building's built like a fucking Faraday cage in this city. <laughs> But not outdoors, no, no. We rarely ever lose it. And so that was weird. And when they were cash on, I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, and we had called them ahead of time to make sure that they were going to be open that night because yeah. they were outdoor and it had been raining where we were. And uh, we asked if they were cash only or not because we knew they were out of of the city areas. Yeah. So I, I you know what? Okay, fine. I have a track there. But that is becoming so rare. Yeah. So, so rare these days. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that covers the basics. Nine. Yeah. We're up to nine. Nine Yay. reasons. Nine's a good we number. We don't go back. That's a very good number. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love nine. But yes, nine reasons <laughs> we don't go to your... We not repeat customers to your haunt. Um, we want to hear your thoughts, though. Why do you not go back to the haunt? That's the question of the week. You can let us know at hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, and youtube.com slash hauntweekly. You can also find us uh, wherever you get your podcasts, including Google Play, Apple Podcasts, da 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 So please do stick around. Um, got a lot of new stuff coming up. Um, like I said, we're going to Transworld later this month. Next week is episode 372, which is an episode of Visible Before. So we're doing the, the news. news and probably have some Transworld updates there as well as part of the conference reminders and just shit happening Yeah. between then and now. So yeah, more on that. Oh, uh, yeah, follow us at all those places and check us out. We hope to see more of you. But until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we'll see you all next week with the news. Um, <laughs> see you all then.